Hey friends, uh, welcome to this small demo where we'll try to understand and learn the nature of how um, the JVM, the Java Virtual Machine works. Uh, I have a small diagram which uh, demonstrates the hardware on top of which is the operating system on top of which is the JVM. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'll have two Java programs, okay, two Java codes. So um, this is the first Java code and this the name of this Java class would be hello world dot class okay and i'll put this particular class file in a jar file so just let me draw this uh, this particular class file will be inside a jar file let me just call it first dot jar okay now my friends what i'm going to do is point this arrow so as to understand that we are going to load this particular class file onto the jvm we want this particular jar file onto the JVM. But what we'll do is, as part of this test, we'll have another jar file with exactly the same class file name. But remember, the code inside this particular Java class will be different and the code in this Java class is going to be different. So what I'll do is I'll put this in second jar file, which would be called second.jar. Okay and you know like we did in the first case we will try to load this also on top of the jvm so my friends ideally the jvm would not load two classes with the same name it does not do that it only loads uh, unique classes you know so either it is going to load the hello world dot class in the first dot jar or it will load the hello world class in the second dot jar so Let's understand, you know, what is the mechanism by which the JVM actually does the class loading. I'll show you the uh, Java code. Um, this is the folder, technical stuff folder. And I have this first folder and the second folder. The first folder contains the hello world.java. I'll just open the code and briefly explain you what it is. A single line code is what I would like to call it. Here it says, uh, it's, it's trying to print this first class gets loaded. Okay. First class gets loaded. This is what it's, it, it tries to print. And then I'm trying to sleep. Okay. Which means I'm going to pause the execution for three minutes before, you know, this particular Java code completes its execution. So this is my first class. Okay. Uh, for, okay. First folders class and the name is hello world or Java. Now I'll go back to the second uh, class. The code is exactly the same. Again, it is called hello world or Java. The only difference is here. It says second class gets loaded. This is the only difference. So the output of the execution of this class and that class would differ there. It will print the first class gets loaded. Here is going to print the second class gets loaded. So let's go ahead and do the compilation for both of these classes. So here I am in the folder called as first. Okay. So let me just go ahead and do the compilation. I'll com compile the hello world class. Okay. So, so we've done with the compilation. And if I execute this class, you will see first class gets loaded and now it is going to sleep for three minutes. So this is the execution of the first class. Now let's go ahead and compile the uh, second class. Uh, Java code compilation for second Java code and now I'll execute the second Java class. That's it. So here it says second class gets loaded and now it's going to pause. So you saw that, you know, I moved in the first folder compiled and ran the first uh, Java code, uh, which is hello world dot class. And again, I'm running the hello world class, which is in the second folder. The output is different. First class gets loaded here. The output is second class gets loaded. Bang. Okay. Okay, friends. So in order to understand um, how the JVM, uh, you know, loads the uh, classes, uh, we'll have to put both these classes, the hello world classes from the first folder and the second folder in jar files. I have the command ready with me. So I'll use the command to, uh, you know, make jar files, put this hello world classes, respective classes in the, in their jar files. Okay. And now I will go to the first dot jar. Okay, and instead of saying second dot jar, I'll mention CVF first dot jar. Plus. Okay, so if I go to the folder, you will see that you know this class file, this particular executable class file bitcode is now inside this jar file. 
and likewise if you talk about the first dot jar the uh, class file is inside the first dot jar now now okay so what we are going to do is we will uh, talk about setting the class path here on the command prompt set class path equals now i'll give the path to the first jar file okay semicolon sorry uh, first dot jar okay semicolon and then i will have to give the path to the second jar file now uh, let me execute okay I'll, I'll i'll now come out of this first so there's no confusion whether i'm in the first folders it doesn't matter because now that i have set the class path it is going to load the classes uh, you know it will find the reference to the classes using the class path rather than being in that folder so what i'll do is i'll just simply come out of uh, this folder as well as this folder just to be sure and now i will try to execute the java code yes this is the java code hello world.java you see you know it says the first class gets loaded why because in the class path we had uh, first dot jar ahead in the class path and then we had second dot jar now let me just change the class path and see if the um, you know if the result changes now i'll put second dot jar you know ahead in the class path and the first dot jar will come later so we'll go back to you know setting the class path and here i will say first dot jar and here i would say second dot jar so I've changed the order. Now let's try go ahead and execute the hello world class. Both the jar file has this class. So you see it says second class gets loaded. So let me change, you know, go back to the first one, first dot jar. Okay. And now I change the order of the class path. And now I'm trying to execute the Java code. It again says first class gets loaded. Now let me reverse the um, order of the class path. And I'm sure you know you will find the other result okay now when i say hello world second class gets loaded so guys i hope you understood the concept and this was very important so whichever jar file be it the first dot jar or the second dot jar whichever jar file comes ahead in the class path as far as the jvm is concerned the jvm is going to prefer that particular class and ignore the other class so if you have second dot jar ahead set ahead in the class path it is going to load this particular class okay it is going to load uh, this particular class okay and if you um, have first dot jar ahead in the class path it, it is going to load this hello world dot class this was the concept of class loading that i wanted to convey to you guys uh, okay so i hope uh, this was helpful now 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 another interesting point here guys if you found this interesting um, i'll appreciate you share this and uh, if you have any more uh, you know comments around that please feel free to share them in the comment section below anyways guys uh, now we're going to discuss the second um, scenario and that is the jvm arguments now we are not discussing about the class path what we are discussing is the jvm arguments and we will try to see how the JV, how the JVM treats the JVM argument. We already saw how the JVM treats the class loading, you know, with respect to setting the class path. Okay, guys. So what we're going to do is, uh, we'll, uh, pass on two JVM arguments, but both the JVM argu arguments are going to be alike. They're going to be same. So let's see which one the JVM picks and which one it ignores. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, when I'm running this program, I'm going to pass the XMX, which is the heap size. Uh, the first one, I'll say 128M, which is 128MB. And the second, I'll say uh, probably 512, 512MB. Let's run this process. Okay, now Java process is running. Let's check out where is the Java process. This is Java process. The PID is 9344. You can see this in the task manager. So... 9344 now guys this is j info this is a tool that comes along with the jdk and i'm passing a flag which is max heap size which will give me the maximum heap size which is nothing but the xmx value for the running process 9344 which is this particular process that we ran so let's see which which of these two maximum heap size it picked the first one or the second one so you see it is 512 mb if you calculate we do the mathematics this will come out to be 512 
uh, MB. So it means it is picking up the, the heap size which is coming later because both of them are identical. So just to be sure what we'll do is we'll rerun this. We'll rerun this uh, Java program and this time we, we are going to swap the uh, heap size and uh, you know just because we stopped and restarted the process we will have a new JVM ID it is 10124 so the new JVM ID 10124 let's run this okay guys see it is picking up 128 MB instead of 512 MB which is this one so the learning is as far as the JVM argument goes, whichever JVM argument comes later is the one which, you know, uh, uh, is the one which it picks up. So this is exactly the opposite. Now the JVM is behaving exactly the opposite. If you remember what we learned for the class path, it was picking up the jar file which stands first in the class path. But if, if, as far as the heap is concerned, it is picking up not the first but the JVM argument that that appears later in the class path. So guys, um, you know, just because I found this interesting to understand how JVM treats the class loading and the JVM arguments differently. I thought it would be good if I can share it with you guys. I hope you liked it and hopefully I find time to, you know, put on a few more videos and I, um, you know, the, actually these things make studies a little interesting. So anyways, Thank you so much. Have a good time.